And this is the one you know that um, last time I show a map in on the bond, which shows the size of the land. And this is really today we can actually put these buildings into places and see how Soho will become the largest landlord on the bond in Shanghai, and how these buildings in a few years' time will look like. Right now, if you go to the bond, you will still see that these are largely under construction. In the next two to three years, they will all be. I think the bond now has no office market. Once these are completed, these will be the office market, and so we will be the ones who set the market terms. Now, these are truly trophy assets uh, and worth keeping, and uh, I think we're excited with this uh, transition. Now, look at the numbers. Um, the market generally was up a lot, and so office rents were also up. We, we put, we did uh, four buildings. These are recently completed buildings. Uh, rents are continue to be up greater than seventy percent, and we calculated that had we kept them, uh, you know, yield on cost would be greater than fourteen percent. So that's really the uh, fundamental decision, the reasoning why we made the, the, the transition is we do believe that Soho projects now with this portfolio of 1.5 million square meter, it means that uh, you know we we expect the yield on cost will be greater than 10 percent. Uh, you know I, I prefer to be conservative and I think it's you know it might, the market might even surprise us. I and mean, if we just look at the historical numbers. Your own cost has always been higher than this. Uh, but going forward, even we uh, price in a conservative economic growth, we would still expect your own cost to be greater than 10%. Now, uh, do we have the balance sheet to support this transition? And you can see that uh, for so many years, we've been so conservative managing our balance sheet. Uh, you know that we've always been cash rich. Uh, we tell the market that we're always being cash rich and the market always tells us why don't we spend the money. Finally, we are spending the money and we're spending the money in a very different way. Uh, here, uh, in the capital resource, we, we have 9.2 billion cash. We still have uh, not, uh, 6 billion on drawn facilities uh, from the banks. Uh, we have 10 billion in the uncollected sales proceeds, which will be coming in as we complete the construction. Uh, we still have 18 billion NMB in the pipeline for sellable. Uh, now this is all cash in. In terms of cash out, we have about 17 billion outstanding land and construction capex. Uh, and for the tax, we still have 4.2 billion tax payable. Remember, we used to pay so much tax with this new transition, with the new uh, business model. Uh, we are, uh, we don't need to be uh, prepare so much uh, tax payable. And so current net hearing is around 20%. Uh, our forecast shows that when we completed the, cons uh, the transition, the hearing ratio would not be greater than 30%. Might even be less than 30% is with all these uh, cash coming in. And that allows us to do the things that we love the most, which is to pay high dividend. And you read it in the announcement that the board has approved that we pay an interim dividend of uh, 12 cents per share. Uh, for the last three years, our dividend yield has always been Around 5.5%, uh, we have every intention to keep this high yield, I mean, high dividend yield policy. Uh, and here I just mentioned as a footnote that we have announced a buyback, share buyback, and we, we intend to do it. We have not been able to exercise it because since we announced it now, it's all, it's all been this uh, blackout period. And now that uh, even more so, we feel this is, uh, you know, we should do the buyback. I think our blackout period finishes today, right? So tomorrow we can <laughs> begin our buyback. Let's 
see how the market reacts to that. Um, and again, you know, we, even with the transition, we're not doing the leasing the first time. Remember, we used to sell the, uh, the properties to private wells. We were still the ones helped them to lease out. So in terms of leasing experience, we have over 10 years of leasing experience. We just used to lease on behalf of our clients. We leased more than 2.5 million square meter. And our Soho offices are always, always fully occupied. And Soho's, Soho office rent growth has always been outpacing the market. So we're very confident, you know, with all of our experience in the office rental market, uh, this transition does not operationally creates much of a challenge. Uh, the part that we uh, feel that we are not as strong is retail management. So you probably saw that two months ago we had formed a partnership with Insight, which is a leading retail manager in, the, uh, in China. Uh, this is really to boost our uh, operation in retail management and retail leasing. Retail is still a small component in the overall portfolio. I think it's less than 30%. So by far the largest still office. Now I would like you to walk away with three numbers. Number one, that this transition means that Soho's portfolio of prime location, Beijing and Shanghai office, is as big as 1.5 million square meters. And also, in five years' time, our rental income will, will be expected to exceed four billion MMB. And that we make this decision on the expectation that yuan costs will be greater than 10%. Now, um, I think that this uh, you know, portfolio of income generating prime location, first tier cities, Beijing and Shanghai, is a far easier business model to understand and for capital market to value than our historical one. Because uh, I think uh, the market had always attacked a, a big discount for the build and sell model. Uh, and yet, if you look at the, the build and hold developers, their discount to NAV, it's just far less. So I think that uh, this is really a time, uh, you know, for this investment builder. It's it's a new model that calls for re-reading, and for all of you here, analysts, uh, I hope you will take a fresh look of Soho, even the old name, but with a fresh uh, look of the new model, and see what really would be the fair value to attach to Soho stock. I think that uh, on the positive side. You can see that it's really a good time to come in to buy because when the share price is so low and the future is very bright.